Welcome to 15 Minutes with Longevity. My name is Giselle Wertheim Ames and I'll be your host. Today we're speaking to Nazneen Khan. She's a registered dietitian and the nutrition and wellness manager from Nestle South Africa. We're going to be talking about the research that Nestle commissioned into the state of wellness in South Africa and what we all need to do about it. Recently we spoke to Neil Higgs, a research executive at TNS Research Surveys, about the key research findings on the obesity epidemic. Let's take a look. Neil Higgs is the Director of Innovation and Development at the TNS Research Surveys. His team investigated the issue of obesity and its causes in South Africa. We went to 3,000 uh, people aged 16 years and older and just under 300 12 to 15 year olds. Um, it was a national sample across all provinces and we didn't restrict it just to um, towns or cities, we went to rural areas as well. And we went from the poorest people right up to the top end. So it was a true national sample. The results were more alarming than Neil had assumed. He says South Africans needed to be informed on healthy living. We found that um, you could divide South Africa up along a very clear continuum, which went from extremely unhealthy both attitudes and behaviours through to a very few number of people who had anything approaching a good idea of what good nutrition is about. Less than one in ten, in fact. Um, and allied with that, we found there were quite alarming levels of risk in terms of people's health factors. So, for example, we found that four out of ten males are overweight, and of those, about a quarter are obese. That's 14% are obese, roughly. For females, the situation is a lot worse. Six out of ten females were overweight, and half of those, that's 30, 31%, I think it was, of them are actually obese. So those are very concerning figures. In addition, if you look at things like waist-hip ratios, we found that 17% of males are at risk, but 75% of females are at risk of cardiovascular disease. So those were quite alarming wake-up calls for us. Um, and, and, and part of the problem is, is that people are not really interested in nutrition. Six out of 10 say they don't really care. Five out of 10 um, people feel that it's, um, it's, it's too difficult. They don't really worry about it. And four out of ten people say, well, it's in my genes, so I can do nothing about it anyway. So we can see we've got a massive educational task in terms of, of getting South Africans more interested in nutrition. With these negative attitudes towards healthy living, Neil fears the obesity epidemic could get worse. It's quite concerning because we looked at their actual eating habits. That they had to keep a diary for a day of what they actually ate. And we found that they over proteinized generally speaking, but the quality of the protein isn't always great. They're eating less than half the required amounts of uh, fruit and veg, and less than the required amount of dairy and water. So a part of that is, is, is uh, an expense issue. People do perceive healthy eating to be expensive. They also perceive it as being quite difficult to do, to find the right kinds of foods. So there's quite a big challenge out there in terms of cost, availability, and People tend to buy food purely for the taste. So we had 58%, for example, say that they actually prefer the taste of fried food to anything else. We had 58% saying they don't do very much exercise. This is what they admit to us, so probably the numbers are even worse. So we've got a lot of very entrenched attitudes and behaviours to overcome. Partly it's a poverty thing, but not entirely. We've got rich people who are very unhealthy. We've got poor people who are very healthy in their attitude and orientation. Thanks for joining me, Nestle. Thanks for having me, Giselle. Very interesting that Nestle, which is traditionally a food company, would um, commission research which really looks at the wellness and I think really specifically the kind of weight factors around the South African consumer. Can you explain a little bit why the company decided this was an important um, thing to do? Nutrition's always been the cornerstone of any strategy at Nestle. Um, if you're looking at some of our businesses, core and integral to any of its successes is the fact that we base all of our brands, our products on sound scientific and nutrition information. So that together with our ambition of wanting to become the most trusted and leading nutrition, health and wellness company in the world, um, helps us to understand why Nestle is on this journey to making um, 
choices easier for consumers, making it tastier and healthier. So everything that leads out of Nestle's ambition will then translate into the elements that we're trying to execute on a consumer level. But this research was very detailed. I mean, you've almost done, I mean, I've seen similar type of research coming out, for example, the Medical um, Research Council. So it was a very detailed, can you maybe explain a little bit about how big the survey was and, you know, its, uh, its, its composition? So it's quite two different surveys, but the outcome eventually um, was the same. And the Nestle Rainbow Health Monitor survey really aimed to understand what consumers were feeling or what their mindsets, mind spaces were about nutrition, health and wellness. We wanted to understand really what they thought was important for their nutrition. Um, so what we can, um, the, the number of respondents we had were about 3000 across all LSA um, across the nation. And um, once we got in some of the results, the um, information was astounding. We looked at um, general um, behaviors in terms of cooking, in terms of purchasing, in terms of procuring, um, and also how they were feeding their kids. And at the same time, we did some uh, anthropometric data. And what that really means is that we measured waist circumferences. We did some BMIs. And that gives you a snapshot of what um, South Africans are actually um, looking to in terms of their state of health. So, so that must be very interesting because if you take, and I think that's what made the study even more interesting, was the fact that you, you could look at what they were, what, what physically they were about, and then you could look at their perceptions around their their nutrition and food habits, and then you could do the analysis between the two. And you're gonna tell us a little bit about, I mean, what was the overwhelming findings for you from this research? The reality is, Giselle, is that we as a South African population are in complete denial of how we are, how we feel, and of our health status. We think we are fine and dandy, that we are a healthy population. Whereas if you look at the research results and you corroborate it with the Health Science Research Council, the two outcomes actually meet. Mm -hmm. We're a, an obese nation. We have almost 68% of South African adults obese. I mean, it's an extraordinary number. I think so, you know, it's a number that, you know, you can't believe that can be real, actually. And in fact, the, the most alarming thing is that the children in this research mm -hmm. are increasing in the overweight and obese category. Um, if you're looking at a specific age group, we are almost double the children in that specific age group compared to America. Yes, I've, I've read some of those similar stats and I've heard that the World Health Organization has us on their watch list at the moment, which is pretty frightening stuff. Again, why is this so, so you saw this in the research, why do you think, what is driving the behavior? This also this lack, this denialism around weight management and wellness? I think, you know, besides the fact that we are subjected to such an extensive amount of food, the types of food, the variety of food. Um, also, we as humans don't have a satiety center that says, you know what, I've had enough. We eat for pleasure. We want to eat food that tastes good. And this is what the research says. The research is quite clear. We, ate for t we eat for taste. Um, whether it has health benefits or not, that's immaterial. We that's know the most important thing. So taste overrides everything. Anytime. We know that we need to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. And most of the, the research respondents say that they know that if they eat healthy, they feel better. But they're not interested in that. They want to make sure that the food is palatable. We as a South African population love sugar. We love salt and we yeah, love no, fat. The sugar thing is, I mean, that to me, is, <laughs> it's a big bomb. I mean, we, we, we've been talking a lot about sugar generally. Yeah. Um, about, I understand the average American imbibes 22.7 teaspoons of sugar a day, and that's not including the, the indirect that's sugar. That's just added yeah. sugar. Exactly. That's added it's sugar. It's fascinating. Do we have a similar metric in South Africa? Though? I don't have actual sta mm -hmm. uh, uh, data or statistics on the sugar consumption, but what I do know is that we're eating way too much um, for health and wellness. Mm -hmm. um, if but it, it makes everything taste so nice. It does, of course, and I mean, it makes all the fluffy cakes look even that much nicer. Mm -hmm. The thing is, anything in moderation is good. It's not that we should cut sugar out completely because that's when we start craving. You want to have a small amount of it, and a gentle guideline is that you need to have about five to 10% of your total energy intake to be able to say, look, I've had a moderate amount of sugar mm -hmm. um, to stave off the cravings and at the same time be in a state of well-being. Okay, so let's just go back. So now we're eating because we like the taste. And obviously taste comes from developed habits. I mean, your palate develops over time. 
Um, so how, how is it that we've gotten to this? I mean, everyone has this whole debate about why, you know, we, South Africans at one point probably were not in this situation. So what has changed? Is it the state of our food that's changed? Um, you say we've got a lot of choice, but um, is there more stuff going into, into foods and um, modern way of living that there's, you know, that, that quality of food is not what it used to be? I think, you know, you've, you've got a few points in that question itself. It's the fact that we've moved from a more rural setting to an urban setting. Um, lots of people are migrating for better jobs and assumedly better lifestyles. Um, and with this comes a change in eating patterns. And we know that um, we want to eat to what we aspire. And at the same time, we know that we've got a deep set rural or a, a we have to go back to our roots. And it's a, it's a challenge to actually make, meet the two or make it work. And often because our lifestyles in the urban setting is so rat raced, it's convenience mm -hmm. that we look for. Um, again, you'll find that in the study that Nestle conducted, people want good tasting food, whether they have the health benefit or not is immaterial, but it needs to be convenient. So I need to take it and run. Um, and I need to be able to be satisfied. More than nutrition value, our South African population is looking for tummy full. They want to feel yes, full. Yes, they need to feel that feeling. Exactly. Yes. Often, you know, we leave early in the mornings to get to a work to a workplace that's two hours, three hours away. So you need to have at least one good meal. Mm. And what tends to happen is that we eat a meal that is high in energy, but not necessarily uh, necessarily in nutrients. So, so this it's the empty calories. It's the empty go, calories. Yeah. Um, and another um, impending doom and gloom situation when it comes to calories is that we're drinking our calories. And I'm not only talking about alcohol, I'm talking about yes. beverages, the sugar sodas, sweetened, and fizzy yeah. drinks. Children, um, in the tuck shop survey that Nestle conducted at the beginning the, of this year. So that was a separate survey. That's a separate add, survey. Add on survey. Okay. Yeah, that is the Nest tuck um, survey that we did. We looked at 100 schools in um, Gauteng specifically. And this was just um, private schools. Um, we didn't drill any deeper. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, children want fizzy, fast, frivolous food. Mm. That's what they want. And that's what they're getting at tuck shops. So again, it's, it's the fizzy drinks, it's the fast foods, it's the convenience foods. Um, and this is how we're getting in too much of calories, uh, more than we need. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. Please join me again next week, where we'll be looking at back and neck pain. Stay well, be healthy, and we'll see you soon.